It's kind of ironic, I think, that in the on the weekend, on the day that Honda have announced that they're going to be pulling out of Formula One as an engine supplier at the end of the 2021 season, I'm just reading the press release as I speak, that uh, Honda in America are just about to have their driver clinch the best scholarship in the world. I'd speak of Linus Lundqvist, who's racing in the America's regional series there. And this weekend has a chance to win that title, to clinch the title, and thus get a free Indy Lights drive in 2021, courtesy of the Honda scholarship. And I think that will continue. I think Honda's involvement in America, reading between the lines, will continue. There's a very classic... Um, Last sentence, thank you in advance for your continuous understanding and support for Honda's motorsport activities and also for the new challenge we will take. I think motorsport activities refers to the United States, but uh, yeah, just to confirm that, Honda will be pulling out of Formula One engine supply, which is Red Bull and uh, Alfa Tori, Toro Rosso as they used to be, at the end of 2021, which will create a lot of um, drama <laughs> in Formula One for sure. Where will Red Bull go with their two teams? Will it be to Mercedes, to Renault, back to Renault, or possibly to Ferrari? Now, I've been beating the drum for a long time that we should have a template engine for midfield teams that want to buy last year's chassis from works companies, from works teams, or indeed a Dallara, and that needs to be a Ferrari engine. And I think we need to start thinking more seriously about that now with this news, but that's only an off the uh, top of the head reaction to it at the moment. Just, um, just to go into the detail as to why they're pulling out. Basically, it's money, I would say. I mean, they're talking about wanting to refocus all their resources uh, to the whole motoring technology and focus on um, carbon-free technology. Uh, and of course, they've got a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, a lot of data from Formula One, and that will be applied. But if, if Formula One was um, doing its job in the sense that it wasn't so expensive and it had that clear path, I guess, um, then maybe Honda would be staying in the championship. If they stay in American racing, it'll be because American racing is a lot cheaper than Formula One. That will be the bottom line. It won't be anything to do with, well, it isn't anything to do with, with uh, carbon neutral racing because that's certainly not the case in the United States. So it will ultimately be about money in my view. And as I've been saying for a long time, the switch to hybrid engines for Formula One was, uh, was always going to be a delicate balance between attracting new suppliers that love this technology and it's a great, uh, great basis for training and for learning. And on the other side of the coin, massive increase in costs, double the increase, more than double of where we were with the, the B8s. Uh, and as I've said, you know, just before you say, well, you know, Formula One had to go in that route, I've always said Formula One should have adopted Formula E before it was created as a separate championship by Jean Todd and the FIA. It should have been part of Formula One. Bernie Eccleston should have got hold of that whole electric car concept and made it part of the Formula One weekend package endorsed by Formula One, enabling Formula One to remain as a pure racing crowd championship, noise, tires, fuel. Um, but that never happened. That never happened because of the fighting, really, between Eccleston and Jean Todd. And so they went their separate ways. And the first thing Jean Todd did effectively becoming president was to give wings, to give feet, to give legs to Formula E as an independent championship, running independently, completely independently of Formula One. And that was always going to be the rocky road to drama and well, I don't say disaster, but certainly um, depressing times in terms of finances. Anyway, Honda pulling out. But I want to try and keep this, um, it is the weekend, let's try and be a little bit more positive about life and about racing. Uh, and as I mentioned, there is this amazing Honda scholarship called the Road to Indy, which is given as awarded to the driver that wins the America's Formula Regional Championship. And to me, it is astonishing. This is the best scholarship in the world. It's astonishing that more drivers haven't been racing in this championship in 2020. Uh, more good luck to Linus Lundqvist, who won the British Formula 3 Championship. He was going through the normal path of any young European driver a few years ago. He won the British Formula 3 Championship. He progressed with a little bit more money, but he was right on the edge of his budget to Euro Formula Open 
in uh, 2019. It was difficult. They had a few problems with the engine not being great. The, the regulations would change VW versus Merck. All for his things came into play. And at the end of that year, end of 2019, he basically reached an impasse and there was no more money. His parents aren't that wealthy and uh, he just couldn't race in Europe anymore. So he went to America, got a drive. Uh, budgets are much cheaper there in the America's Formula Regional and in, in the America's Regional Championship. And he's now won. Um, well, he's just won every race except one. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And he can clinch the championship this weekend in Homestead. And so I caught up with him just before that and uh, talked to him about that sport to America, winning all these races and having this potential scholarship now, uh, guiding his path to the top of motorsport in America, albeit, but nonetheless, it ain't bad. Now, Linus, good to see you. Congratulations on all that success. I know the grids aren't the most competitive out there in the world, but a win is a win is a win, correct? Yeah, for sure. Like I say, it's been it's been incredible. Incredible. I mean, 10 out of 11 wins, it's, it's difficult to beat that. Um, obviously, it's it was a bit of a last minute decision as well with going going with this championship because I was looking to, to stay in Europe but then the the possibility and the opportunity to come and race in America opened up and we just went for it. So yeah, super happy that we've been able to, to have this season so far. It's obviously an amazing scholarship from Honda and that's obviously why you're out there doing this series. But at the same time, you'd kind of got to the end of the road in Europe, correct? I mean, the budgets were just out of control. Exactly. And I mean, that is 99% of the reason why we looked into doing this championship as well is that the the scholarship from Honda uh, is that if you win this championship you get a fully funded drive in the Indy Lights championship which also has a prize if you're able to win that championship you're guaranteed three starts in, in IndyCar so I mean for for any junior driver this this is a great prize and it's, you know certainly a place you want to be. So how big a move has it been for you to go to the United States new championship new cars new people new team? Well I'll start off by saying it's very different, uh, it is, and the thing is that because I've been based in the UK for the last three years on season and then off season back in back in Sweden, so I've been kind of used to that, but now obviously being based here in the US, you're getting <laughs> you're getting to know the country quite a lot, and you're traveling a fair bit as well to, to different states and everything, so it, it was a lot to, to take in in the beginning, not just at the racetrack, but off track as well, uh, but then when you, you arrived at the track as well, it's very different, it's... I will say it's a bit more old school, so it's not as maybe data driven uh, as as we do in Europe, which is almost kind of nice because obviously now it's more about the relationship with you and your engineer and more about the feel of the car and not too much look looking into data and videos, which is kind of nice. And obviously it's been working kind of good for us. And what about your lifestyle? Where are you living and, and what's it like for you to make that adjustment? Um, so I'm renting renting a room uh, with uh, another racer actually. He's the drag racer, a Swedish guy called Johnny Limberg. Um, so I'm staying at his house, renting a room, uh, and and I'm based like almost everyone else in in Indianapolis, uh, in Brownsburg though. So it's like 25 minutes from from the center of it. So uh, it's been going all right. Uh, obviously, as I didn't know anyone when I moved to the U.S., um, I didn't know Johnny to to start off with. So. We just had a had a common friend back in Sweden, and obviously he we got in touch, and he said that he had a room available. So uh, it was it took honestly a couple of weeks, maybe even the first month and a half before I really got got into life here in the U.S. But you know, after a while, you get into your routines, and obviously you start racing, um, and life is good again. And what's the Ligier regional chassis like to drive? And be careful here, because my mate Dave Cooper, who used to work with me at Ferrari when we were building the Formula One cars for Alan Prost and Nigel Mansell back in the early 90s, he is running Ligier in America. So be careful what you say here, Linus. Heavy. <laughs> I'm going to start with that. It's very heavy compared to uh, to the Dallara that I drove drove last year. So And as well, because last year we ran with naturally aspirated engines and this one has a turbo so it takes a bit of time to get used to those and make make sure that it comes natural to you so you don't have to think about it while whilst you're driving but i think now i've gotten used to it and obviously the way how to drive and maybe not push 100 percent on on the entry and focus more about the exit and make sure that you get out of the corner whilst with the Delara one you could almost throw it around a bit more um so it's uh, it took a while before i could get used to that and then another 
big thing was the the circuits and the tracks they're so different to to the ones that we have in europe it's a lot more old school as well with no runoffs it's just the tarmac grass and then the wall so yeah no mistakes what, what's been your standout track so far i gotta say barber that's got to be my favorite place that we've been to so far the elevation and it's quite high speed as well um but you still have that that feeling of you can't make a mistake because even if you put one wheel off both either on the entry or the exit you know you're going to end up with a big crash because there's no runoffs and uh, you know there's only grass and walls so it was cool and then i gotta say with barber the whole place around it was super nice i mean the place could have been like a national park even when you arrived at the gates you're just like wow this is next level so that was very nice inevitably as you go further up the ladder now in the united states in motorsport ovals will appear on the horizon what is your feeling about them the thing is that because I've, I've never raced on an oval this championship doesn't include any any ovals so that's going to be well that will be my biggest challenge i think going forward uh racing here in america is uh, getting used to the ovals and uh we'll see hopefully i can maybe try to do a test uh at some place and just to get a feel for it but honestly i'm excited i mean just looking i know it's a the biggest race uh with the with the indy 500 but just looking at it it gets it gets my adrenaline pumping i mean it, it's got to be so special driving at those speeds and so close to the walls and with the other guys as well so yeah i look forward to to doing a couple laps in an oval uh, i think it's going to be very very different and very difficult to get used to in the beginning but yeah it's going to be very cool what does it how do you keep your motivation going and how do you keep your focus going and do you get used to winning used to it yes but it's every much as enjoyable the first one as, as it is the last one i mean you know obviously you get kind of used to it but it doesn't take any fun out, out of it it just gets more and more fun <laughs> great to talk to you linus very best of luck this weekend and look forward to seeing you what indie lights next year all right perfect thank you so much peter it's, it's been really nice talking to you